Welcome! I know you're waiting for another tying video from me, but while you are waiting, I'm gonna release a series of shorter videos with some nifty little tips around this and that. So, today I'm gonna show you how I make a type of fishing log with the help of Google Maps. I use this to mark my catches accurately to where and when I caught a fish, and it gives me a good overview of an area where the fish normally gathers. I still use my regular fishing diary as well, uh, because I like the feeling to actually sit down and write up my catches uh, after a long day of fishing. Um, but uh, this fishing log in Google Maps is quite a good complement. So, first things first, why should you do a fishing log? Because I know there are a lot of you that still don't do it. Uh, there can be several reasons for logging and catching, one of the basic ones being to keep track on how much you actually catch and compare it with friends, but uh, maybe most importantly compare it with yourself, with other years, other months, your own fishing. Uh, for example, last year I caught fish in quite a small area along a very long weed bank uh, when the wind was blowing from the north. This year, during the same period, I can go back to see that I did just that and start focusing on this particular area where I know I've caught fish before uh, during the exact same period uh, with the same conditions like temperatures and winds etc. And if you don't write details like that down you tend to never be able to remember these things. You might remember uh, roughly where you caught the fish but will you remember from where the wind was blowing or what the water temperature was? No. Uh, and the main advantage of doing it on a map like this is that you can see more or less exactly where the fish was caught, which I think is the most fun. Okay, so how do you go forward creating your own map slash log then? Well, you're gonna need a Google account. There's no way around that if you're gonna wanna save your maps. So if you don't have that, uh, you need to register for one of those first. It's free, and I'm guessing most of you have one already. Next thing you are gonna do is uh, go to google.com slash mymaps, where you will be greeted by this screen. Click on create a new map, or open a map if you want to change something or add something to existing map. But since this is our first time here, we create a new map. First things, uh, you want to name your map, so click on the heading that says Untitled Map up here and change it to whatever awesome name you want to give it. Next thing is optional, uh, but I don't really like the default base map. So uh, if you want to change it, click on the marker next to it and change it to whatever you like the most. I am quite fond of the satellite map here. Next thing, you need to decide how you want to work with layers. You can of course have one single layer and add all your catches there, but there are advantages in having different layers for different time frames for example. Depending on how much you fish, uh, I use a layer per year of fishing. But I know a friend of mine who fishes uh, more than me and most importantly catches way more fish than me. He has one layer per month. Um, but I also, I use uh, a layer per year, uh, but I also have a separate layer for catches done from someone else uh, well, in my boat. And this gives me a bigger range of fish to look at when trying to find friends or good spots. Uh, and I also have a separate layer for fish caught by uh, my son. And there's a color coding going on here that you're, you're looking at that I'm going to talk a little bit about later. But for the sake of this demo, let's say that you create a layer per year, like I have in my map. So click on the untitled layer heading and change it to 2015 like this. 
what you can do here is import data from another source like Excel. Uh, this is quite complicated. Uh, I've tried it once, but I'm not familiar with it. So I'll just show you how to add caches manually. If you want to import uh, your own data, there are quite a few tutorials that you can find on the internet to do this. And so let's zoom in on my home waters here and get started. Basically what you are seeing here are more or less where I fish over the course of a year. It's quite a large area. And if we zoom in one more step, we will central in on the area where I fish the very most. And now you're actually looking at the pier where I have my boat, uh, which is no real secret. Most people know that I fish this area. Uh, but I'm not gonna give away any more spots than this, of course. Okay. Okay. Disappointed! So, for example, let's say I do a couple of casts from the pier here before going out with the boat, and I catch a pike, weighing in around 2 kilos. First thing I need to do is add a marker for it by clicking up here, and then click on the map where the fish was caught. Name the marker to a name, uh, whatever name standard you want to use. I name mine uh, with the combination of date and place. Like When I go down to the description field, uh, I fill in whatever information I feel I want to add. Uh, I try to always at the minimum fill in weight uh, and also wind direction and water temperature. If you want to change rows in the description, you hold down the ALT key and press ENTER. If you only press ENTER, you will exit this, uh, this screen. I mentioned earlier about color coding. And if you look at this example from my live, live map, you will see I've used different colors and different type of markers. Once you've built a map that spans over several years, you're gonna want to get an overview to easily see the different years. I have color coded my markers to have a different color per year. You can also choose to use different types of marker to represent different things. If we again look at my own map, you will see that there are some different icons used here. Any star icon represents a fish at 5 kilos or over. This way I can get an overview on all the bigger fish, big for me that is. I've caught, and I've also used a circle here to indicate that this is a fish caught by someone else in my boat, not myself. So feel free to use different icons to represent different things for you, it's all about making it easy to get an overview of things. To change an icon, we can go back to the poor pike we caught at the pier, go to the list of markers up here on the left side, and click this little thing. Now you can choose to change the color of the marker like this. And then you choose any of these basic markers or click on the more icons shape to get a whole range of icons that you can use. The nifty part is that you can also link to an URL or any custom icons that you want to use. It's really easy this. All you need to do is start adding markers. If you have a written fishing diary already, you can manually put in all those markers and then add new ones as you catch more fish later. You can also move markers between layers by dragging them like this. One more thing that I want to show you is how to add a photo to a marker like I have used on this one here. Click on the marker and then click the camera icon down here. Then choose the image URL tab and link for example to a photo on Facebook or any other online place. You should be able to link it to OneDrive or similar online storage services too, but I haven't tried that one. So that's basically it then. Hope you've enjoyed my little tip for creating a fishing map slash log using Google Maps. See you soon again. Until next time, do like a pike's tooth and stay sharp. See ya!